The Secret of Monkey Island. This was one of LucasArts treasures. And this came out in 1990. And I, who knows, they may have been fully aware of what they were unleashing onto the world. When they created this pirate themed adventure. I didn't get it when it first came out. I think at the time my computer couldn't handle something like that. So what I ended up, I got it some years later as part of a collection of LucasArts' greatest games. Uh, that con collection included uh, Maniac Mansion, which I had already had a copy of, Zack McCracken, which I already had a copy of, but it also included the Indiana Jones, the I believe it's considered the graphic adventure. It included Loom and it included Secret of Monkey Island. And I will admit, I think of the five games, Secret of Monkey Island was fourth on my want to get list of those five games, since I already had two of them. I just wanted to experience them in better graphics. <laughs> well, I found I enjoyed the secret of Monkey Island very much because in true style for some of their games, they had their crazy moon logic and also the beautiful subtle jokes they put in there. I mean, they named the bar the Scum Bar, which was a s direct reference to their, to the tool they used, the script creation utility for Maniac Mansion. And they call it Scum. And then as I played the game, some of it was just downright bizarre and downright funny. I mean, they put in all sorts of crazy things. As I said, they used their moon logic. And, you know, this was add added to the fun of the game, I think. I mean, when you're trying, when you go to find the buried treasure, when you dig it up, you find in it, uh, I found the buried, I, I dug up the buried treasure of Bailey Island, and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. <laughs> Which pokes fun at one of those, um, I think they were a bit popular in the 90s. I went to New my friend went to New York and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. Or, I went to Atlantic City and all I got was, you know, all I left with was this lousy t-shirt. <laughs> Stuff like that. But there were other things that they threw in there to, uh, to keep people from, you know, to keep people laughing. I mean, you had the pi the 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 uh, pirates, uh, the men of low moral fiber. And that was funny in and of itself. Oh, we're with the circus. With our trained elephant. Where's the elephant? The rat scared it away. Stuff like that. <laughs> and uh, there was... I, I, I must admit, I had a laugh throughout the series, as, and there's so many iconic characters that got created through this. I mean, you have your wisest of the wise characters, which is the voodoo lady, who has one nice theme. Ba -dum, boom, boom, boom. You know, she has her own theme. That's how important she is. And 
your unlikely protagonist. I mean, when you when you're thinking of a pirate, you're thinking of some swashbuckling names like Blackbeard, Redbeard, stuff like that. And what you got is you got Guybrush Streepwood. Very <laughs> unlikely pirate name. Whose biggest skill is to hold his breath underwater for 10 minutes. Which is a remarkable feat. Of course, how he can do it and still talk underwater. And there's actually a way you could die in the first game. I mean, this this was one of the first games in which death wasn't really an option. And I mean, it, it wasn't an option. You had to literally look for a way to die in the game and I think the only way of achieving it is when Guybrush um, after he quote gets done with the <clears throat> theft of the idol uh, Fester Shinetop the sheriff on Melee Island who is actually the ghost pirate LeChuck, literally throw, um, ties Guybrush to the idol and then throws the idol in, into the, the harbor with Guybrush with it, figuring Guybrush is dead. Now, of course, you know, Guybrush can breathe underwater for 10 minutes, and if you stay underwater for 10 minutes time, you will actually die. 10 minutes of waiting around. Which basically means it's literally impossible because anybody who's playing a game like that, they're going to be trying to figure things out, how to get, well, I suppose I should untie myself. Or at least pick up the idol and then climb out. Plain and simple. So, literally, you had to really search. Now, a good part of this game, the first part of the game is considered the three trials. And that's actually something you can do in any order of the three tasks. Uh, after you quote, rob the mansion of the governor, you get to fully meet the governor, and you meet another of the iconic characters, which is, of course, Governor Marley, who becomes Guybrush's love interest. And you get to see the start of their tumult, their uh, iconic love story. <laughs> Now, of course, after the trials, Elaine is kidnapped by the ghost pirate LeChuck. And then we are have to get a crew to rescue the governor. Well, and then get, of course, get to Monkey Island and get off Monkey Island and get back in time to rescue Elaine, who actually does have pretty much everything in, in hand, ready to, you know, pull a surprise. You know, so Guybrush in his own good-hearted nature literally screws up the plan. <laughs> But that's a basic story, and it's a great game. I, I, I do admit this. I mean, like I said, you've got some in-game humor. Uh, for example, 
uh, when you have to earn some money you grab a put a pot on your head there's a helmet goes that go to the circus that's on the island and get shot out of a cannon to prove that it can be done of course in your when you fall to the ground they have some fun with that I think the text is upside down in both ver both the original and the special edition in which Guybrush is either saying that he's selling these fine leather jackets or his name is Bob and Threadbare are you my mother there's a pirate in the scum bar who's like oh it's like are are and when you ask him about Loom, oh Loom, you mean the new fine the new fantasy adventure from Lucas Arts, in which you play as Bob and Threadbare and have to solve puzzles with the music theme? Yeah. And also puts in there <laughs> text on the bottom like shameless plug, shameless plug, shameless plug, or something like that. <laughs> so you know it's beautiful, and they put other nods. To other get you know that's something that they decided to uh, do for others but it's just it's something that they always have done they put in like little nods to other projects that they've worked on and it's great that they do that it adds to the humor because it's not really one you can take seriously at least nine times out of ten you can't take it seriously <laughs> and uh, you got you meet a whole variety of characters on the island you have a ship salesman Stan he is the stereotypical salesman you don't want to run into I'm not kidding on that and he wears a plaid outfit and plaid has always been a difficult thing for animators to work with especially in clothing because it's the only time you could tell an outfit isn't changing If you have a white outfit or a, a shirt with a familiar zigzag pattern like another iconic character, you can see when they move because they always, you know, make the outfit move with them. So it's easy to maneuver, you know, make it look like they're moving, but not plaid. Plaid remains iconic in animation, I swear, because it is so difficult to make it look natural moving. So what they end up doing is they kind of leave it, the pattern sort of stays, but when the guy moves, you know, it can be animated, but, you know, that plaid look no matter which way his arms and body is going is static it just doesn't move which creates a bit of a funny effect <laughs> and I know I mentioned that how they put little jokes in there which causes you to think things through in sort of a weird way at one part you need to press skull it's kind of hard to press a stone uh, a bone and let it stay in shape it just shatters not hard if it's on the flag <laughs> but one of the most icon one of the the biggest laughs I got with their jokes is that Guybrush comes to a bridge there is guy there is a troll there apparently like none shall pass 
and he asks for a very specific item. Something that looks useful but is in fact completely useless. It misdirects you. And at some point you can get a fish. Not just any fish. It's a herring of a particular color. It's a red herring. The troll wants a red herring. And after you give him the red herring and he lets you pass, he lifts up his head, revealing a human head underneath, and he eats the herring. <laughs> and I think the only point in there is just to throw you off. It's just to make you laugh. I think one of the greatest things of this game is the insult sword fighting. Now, <laughs> when you learn how to sword fight, because one of your tasks to become a pirate is to challenge the sword master of Melee Island, a woman named Carla. Yeah, they were very forward thinking at this time although there are noteworthy women pirates. But <laughs> insult fighting, and it has become iconic too, especially getting more spread through the internet. So sword fighting on Melee Island was work, worked like this. Actually, sword fighting in general. You have... Yeah, you can be good with a sword. But the real advantage came in the insults and the retorts. So you actually have to spend a good deal a good deal of time learning all the insults and their responses. To do that, you challenge other pirates. One of the more iconic ones is like you fight like a daily farmer. To which the person is supposed to, you know, avoid the ja the the power of the insult is supposed to respond, how appropriate you fight like a cow. And then it's like has like. You know, you get those fun insults in there. And that's what makes part of it fun because you could just have, you know, you, you know someone who's played the game and is, is a fan of the game. If you could throw out one of those insults and they know how to respond. It's like... Like one other, another good one, insult that I think they threw in there was people run away from me when they see me coming to which I think the response was Maybe it's because of the smell of your breath or something like that. I can't remember the exact insult. I'd have to look it up, but it's 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 funny. And they could have so much fun with this. Especially when you start throwing out swordmaster insults. Oh that's not fair, that's one of Swordmaster's insults. <laughs> they can't respond to that. They don't know the correct insult or the correct retort. <laughs> Uh, of course, you can't really go much farther than this than to mention, of course, the the villain, and that's uh, the pirate LeChuck, the ghost pirate LeChuck. Of course, you quote get rid of him by the end of the game, 
then you have to give him credit. I mean, he doesn't give up. And he likes to put his own, you know, he takes a more hands-on approach to his plans. And he's iconic. I mean, you may not know this. This game's had influence over the years. And one, they even say, um, part of Davy Jones from the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean franchise was inspired by the pirate LeChuck. And I've also found, I mean, this was this game was the start of a legacy. A memorable legacy. To see, and when they did the, like, special editions of the, of the first two games years later, it was nice touch. I mean, they even designed them so you could play them in the up, you know, the with the updated look or the original look, which was a brilliant, brilliant design choice because it brings in the old fans. It'll bring in new fans, and that's a that's a great deal. This was like one of the big franchises that LucasArts had created. I mean, something they could be known for other than Star Wars. And it's it, it started a real legacy with all these iconic characters. And some ambitious group actually turned it into a play. Uh, I think you can find it on YouTube right now, which just shows how influential and how amazing this game is. And over the years, I've beaten it a few times, and I'm glad I picked this up. I'm glad I initially picked it up many years ago as part of that collection. It's a fun game. It's a good laugh. And just some of the craziness on how to get past things. And it also introduces one of the famous yet deadly <laughs> dangerous drinks in computer gaming. Grog. And trust me, when you get you see the list of what all is in Grog, <laughs> you have to laugh you really do have to laugh and that's all I'm going to say about Secret of Monkey Island because there's so many others games in the franchise that you need to address too so until next time this is Rich Kale here on YouTube Rich Gen X elsewhere thank you for listening if you still are, I hope you still are, I appreciate it. Uh, give the video a like, and next time round on the retrospective, well, then that would be telling what's coming up next. So you gotta wait and see. Of course, if you've started to realize, I'm doing this in order of games that I've beaten on the channel. so. You'll see which one's up. And please, check out the channel. Check out the playthroughs. Check out all the stuff I've been putting up there. I appreciate it. Take care, all. Bye.